about his, his talk about marketing and finance. Uh, I need some help from the audience. Um, I need your honesty also. Please uh, raise your hand whoever in the last two years was asked to do much more with less, but at the same time, when you went to the next budget cycle, you get your budget cut. Please raise your hand because this doesn't work, it has to change the whole uh, pitch for now. Okay. So today, we're going to talk about why uh, this is happening in, the, in our ecosystem, why it's becoming harder and harder and harder to get the resources we need for our, for our plans. How we're responding towards that um, context. And finally, we're willing to use a new concept, a new way of having the right conversations at the company that we call finance, smart finance. Now, this is me. Uh, I am Pedro. I am, you can call me Pepo. Um, I started my career in growth and marketing like eight to ten years ago, and I come from a different background. I come from finance and economics. Today, my role is the chief business officer at Link Club and responsible for our client uh, global relationships and our consultancy practice. Recently, I've been traveling a lot to Sao Paulo, like in the last year, because I was doing the country manager job too. But fortunately, in the last month, we onboarded Amanda Sabatina, our new country manager, who is here today. So hopefully, you all have a chance uh, to meet her in the, in the uh, after this conversation. What is WinClub? Um, we have been trying, we have been in Brazil for a very, very long time, but I still have the idea, the feeling that most of the people in Brazil have don't really know what we do in the in the day to day. So I want to take this opportunity to explain a little bit better what are we doing. Uh, we do consultancy and execution of growth strategies, in other words, of strategies to acquire, retain, and monetize uh, users. Another way of saying it is like we're a consultancy firm and a marketing agency all together in one. We call that approach uh, growth transformation. For most well, of you, if you don't know our company, you probably know some of our clients right here on the slide, uh, and you, you probably start asking our work behind our clients. Creative, page media, own media, a lot of work on the market side, helping them to understand what is the best market side they can pull together, and finally, uh, helping them on um, putting together the right growth strategy. Now, I'm going to start the presentation. It has three parts. The first block, we're going to talk about the context, why, why it's harder for all of us as growth marketers to get the resources we need to succeed in our company. Second, what is our response so far? And then I will introduce the concept of smart finance. A lot of things happening. So you can see the titles. This is what the, the different themes and trends that we are bombarded every day. It's very hard to figure out like what is what is going on. Um, so we're going to do our best. In, from our point of view, this like landscape or a lot of you know, some of the conversations this morning we were talking um, about the economy, about signals, about the political tensions, about the digital opportunity. Well, our our take on this reality is twofold. On one side, we see that the we think we continue to think we're very optimistic that the digital opportunity in Brazil is huge. We saw some metrics in the in the morning about internet penetration and the, and the opportunity is uh, open e-commerce. E-commerce is projected to grow 19% over a year for the last for the next five years. To put that number in perspective, GDP is growing by 2%. So e-commerce is growing like almost like 10x faster than the, than the GDP, which is like massive. And then the, the team from Atlantic that is morning show the opportunity there is there for digital, for traditional sectors to be transformed by digital. So on one side, the digital opportunity is massive and there's a lot of opportunities and I think that is why most of us are here today to learn how to grasp this uh, tech ideas to how to grasp this opportunity. On the other side, on the other side, what we see 
things that the fundamental equation in digital market, marketing is threatened. What I, what I, what I mean by that is we have ATV on one side, how much revenue or profits a client is going to generate for us over time, over the life of and we have the cost of acquisition. Over the last three years, this equation changed dramatically. So the first thing I want to talk today is like why this change before responding to that, and then we're going to introduce the concept of product finance. What are the key drivers behind this transition? First, the economy, the cash is the resource of the economy, and second, has to do a lot with the, how the digital ecosystem is being. Going to the economy, uh, monetary policy is a very strong presence in in, the, in what we have to do in our companies in this day. In the last few years, since the late 2021, early 2022, until half 2023, interest rates all across the world went crazy. Brazil is not extension to secure the elite the, uh, interest rate. Why is this important? The first part, of course, is there is like less funding, companies have less budget, and where do you look for cutting costs? The first place to cut off is marketing. Why? It's very big. First, most people don't understand it. They think that we just do ads and that's it. But uh, after you pass that layer and you're talking to like very, very smart people in the company, you're too thinking about marketing and like uh, an increasing the interest rate makes it very hard for us to do uh, the business. The first one is paid up periods. You need to get super, super fast and short. But second is LTV. What do you mean by that? If you're measuring LTV in the right way, you're probably taking like the timing with your customers for five years, and you have to bring the revenue the customer is going to do in 2027 or 2029 towards today. In order to do that, you get interest rate. When interest rate goes up, that future value is worth very, very little today. So the point here is all of you are managing an incredible business with incredible companies. The clients that you were having in 2021, even if they behave exactly the same now, like they do the same amount of purchases, the same average price, etc., those clients are worth 50 to 60 percent less today because of the difference of interest rates. So this is why finance is a little bit behind, like on our net, saying like, hey, you can't spend what you were spending before; you have to spend much less because at the end of the day, our clients are worth less. On the other side, uh, and well. We we'll already talk about this a lot in the morning in Atlantico, how like funding went up and down. The whole purpose of this is to the interest rates are up. It's very hard to run a future business. Now, the other part is that we have the economy making things harder for us. On the other side, we have the digital ecosystem, which is not static. There's privacy, like underlying, like this famous trend to privacy. But it's making things harder. There was an awesome presentation before lunch about signal laws, data segmentation, and all of that. I'm not going to get into the details. But I want to share one point which is very important for this LTV to have a question. The less signals we have, we have less data to find the customers that we want for our companies. So the impact of that is that probably LTV from media going down, it's hard to find them, and cut is going up. We're showing probably more impressions to people that don't care about our products because we have less signals. So, you put all these things together. We have a way to put it to one side. We have a tough contest between the economy and the digital loss of signals. What are our what are teams doing? What are the best companies in the world doing right now to call with this? I mean, and I think they're in the intersection, they have some of these like, business desired outcomes that are companies are trying to do. I want to tell you a bit more about that, the companies are responding. From the start, I want to say at first, companies are transforming themselves. Growth teams across the world and in the field, for now, we can see how, are transforming them themselves from sprinters, from companies that were Designing, optimize to run 100 meters in 90 seconds or to grow very, very, very fast in a very short period of time to secure the next milestone the next milestone towards marathons. Marathons. Runners that are optimizing a little amount of energy over a very long time. If you think about it in the marketing side, it's like you have 
action on the resources, fix or going down, you have to spread around for the next three to five years to achieve your goal. So this is the information that's happening. How? Well, there are certain levers that even in this complicated landscape, we can pull. The first one is content. Content represents today 50, 60, 70 percent of the performance of our channels, at least in this context. So, if, if we have just one thing to do, we need to really, really work very hard on optimizing content. A couple of things to have in, in, in mind here. The first thing, content change dramatically in the ecosystem. Now, if content doesn't entertain our potential audiences, it's impossible this is going to have impact. The second thing, in order to entertain, you have to use creators. Creators connect to brands. People don't follow brands anymore, they follow people. So in order you have to drive good performance, your ads, you need to create entertaining content by creators. And the third piece, you need to test and test and test a lot, and they have a future opportunity to optimize this. So, let me say in a, in a few words, if today, June 13, 2024, and your companies you still don't have a good process to create performance, a great diversity of performance, creators, not using AI to scale, you're missing a huge opportunity in the table. The second piece, and this is very, this is very close to what we're going to talk about uh, looking for the right customers, has to do with optimizing towards value. Move, up, move away from minimizing the cap and start thinking about how do we bring the right customers to our company. There's a lot of ways to do this, uh, but the best companies in the world are introducing all their key models into the optimization process. Third piece, introducing instrumentality towards decision making in budget. Incrementality represents a 50 to 20, 15 to 20 percent reduction in increasing our life opportunity. The landscape of channels continues to grow. We were thought six, six to five years ago that Meta and Google was everything, was wrong. TikTok appeared, new channels appeared, appear, programmatic is evolving every day, commerce media is like a huge part of the, of, of the media mix now, I think there's nothing really surprising about that. So, Continue testing, finding new pockets for the audiences is key. And the last piece, it's very hard to acquire the right customers. It's much more harder than it was. So once we have them, we have to do everything in our power to try to retain them, engage them, and make them engage much more of our friends. So here's where I steer in, and no media and to get. To execute on this, it's important to have the right amount of stack, use it efficiently, and really evolve our teams to close the silos between the functions. With this, I'm finishing the second block of the presentation. We talk about the context, how the context is making it harder for marketers to get the right resources to grow sustainably. We talk very briefly about the opportunities we have the off teams to really drive impact in the LTV impact. Here we have a quick inspirational quiz to understand where you are in the company, the reason to But now, we're going to really go into the topic of this conversation. I think I made the lose 15 minutes. This is where we start, and I'm back in the beginning. So, context is complicated, we're doing a lot of stuff, but still, I'm sure we're in June. This is the moment where we're discussing Q3 to 4, maybe to 55 budgets. I'm sure that all of you are going to the board and saying, hey, we're increasing our revenue by 20%, we're spending less, and the response is going to be, the response from the bill was going to be, there's no more budget. So what do we do? Why is this happening? Our point of view, there is someone missing in the conversation. Someone is very important. The team that is responsible, the team that is the sole mission, is to assign resources across the company, the finance team. This is the real data. This is like today in this event, we're only talking about the distribution, instrumentality, creative, LTV, all of them we're talking about that's going to have a lot of impact. Science is not here. They're not listening to So when we go back to our companies, they have no clue when we talk about MAMA, we teach all these new initiatives, and they say, so what? So it's very important that we have like introduce them to the, to the conversation. And think about the following. 
you want to finance a personal risk in what you do, and it's not because you are not smart people. They're, they're truly are. But it's hard to understand their input and output relationship in marketing. So if you don't understand it, they usually go top down, say, hey, you have to grow 20% and your budget 10% more. Why? They have no choice. This is where we want to introduce our uh, new framework, where we think of bringing a new player to the, to the conversation who is going to drive a lot of, of results. It's a really, really, really meaningful conversation in the How do we do it? The first piece is uh, the first piece has to do with connecting the objective. What do you know about that? I'm sure a lot of you here have a very aggressive target of getting to another 20 million monthly to users by the The key question here that we have to ask is how do we connect that to a choice value for the The first thing, how does conversations we involve? Take the team, the final team to understand how are our day to day goals connect to where we really drive value in the company and the work condition. For example, if interest rates go down next year by seven percent, do the same. Our company is going to work the same. Is that an opportunity to go faster? Well, be, be sure that we're connecting the, the dots in our company. The second piece, what we want to achieve, we want to achieve a plan that is consistent. And when we consistent, a plan in which the goal that we have growing, I'm sure that everyone here has a growth goal, nobody has a goal of decreasing year by year, is connected to the resources we have at the time. And at the same time, you're able to track this over time, be accountable, and models in it. So, how do we do it? We're going to start a very quick, very quick year, and I'm looking at more of the session for process that we're working with clients. And it starts with a quantitative growth model to go all the way to the quantity part and then to incentive definition. Quantitative growth model, um, this is a very simple concept. Whoever of you is uh, our research alumni before you know this framework, with a lot of things to do this. But the whole idea is to be able to very, in a very simple way, grasp how the company grows. So that everyone can understand. The marketing team, the growth team, the finance team, the executive, everyone, and you say, hey, how does the big pay grow? Well, everyone has the same answer. The goal of this is not to be precise in the numbers, but to be precise in the strategy. To be precise in the numbers, we have the big start, and just take one to go for Here is the moment where we put all together our assumptions to the business, to identify our Northern metrics, to identify how things move the Northern metrics. We put the baseline numbers together and we start projecting. Project. What do we get from here? A tool, like a model, where you can see the values all together. From there, you can identify how they're driving results. You can model scenarios. This is very important scenario modeling because you probably have this conversation. Like, hey, we need to cut budgets. What do we cut it? What do we do? What do we get? So, and finally, you have a bottom top line that allows finance to get into marketing. Finance, trust me, we love this because you're giving them access to do what they do very well, which is you know, the bottom market. The last piece, probably the most important to try to change, is to be able to transform these models into the right incentives to change. Why it's important, incentives at the end of the day, try to save you. If our teams are not aligned with the model, it's going to be very hard to try to so, having that, we grab this product in a very good model, we transform this very quantitatively into the PGM, and we finally transform this into the business. To finish, this is a project in Brazil, it's huge. It's massive. I'm very optimistic about the future of the university. It means everywhere. At the same time, it's very hard to get the result that we need. It's going to continue being hard to convince the company about the resources that we need. We have some levers, you know, all of these programs are very strong. They can have a lot of impact in our companies that we have seen across the world. And you probably are implementing this, but it's not going to be enough. To be enough, we need to bring finance to the table, a lot of meaningful conversations to try to get a very, very consistent plan over time, move this to drive. No, it's my question.
Muito obrigado, gente. Eu acho que isso é muito bom. E se você quer saber mais sobre isso, você pode entrar no site do Sesco. E, novamente, obrigado por assistir. Foi um prazer estar aqui. Obrigado por assistir.